to the Connor Poise Podcast. Um, this week, we have a great show. Uh, I am your host, Ever Stevenson, joined by some of my other lovely co-hosts. Hello, everybody. My name is Malik Foster. I'm a co-host for the Connor Poise Podcast. Hi, everybody. And I am your third co-host, Samantha Adams. Um, so today, we are going to talk more talk about the pandemic, uh, more so about the vaccines, the variants, and the very latest um, if you guys check us out on our YouTube page, you'll see we actually had a discussion about the pandemic a while ago when they were talking about vaccines and what was going on with the pandemic. So we just want to go ahead and continue the discussion. Um, but before we do that, um, we need we we're gonna I'm gonna go ahead and highlight our um, our black business for the week. Um, it's called. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. It's called. Um, the real Negus brand. Um, it's a brand based out of Cal. The it's based out of California. Um, they have they sh obviously they sell clothing. Um, but I just wanted to go ahead and show you guys the price point is really reasonable. Um, see they have hoodies, they have t-shirts. Um, some say, say blackity black, black families versus everybody. You know it's cool. So you guys can check them out by going to their website. Their website is realnegus.com. That's R-E-A-L-N as in Nicholas, E-G as in girl, U-S. Um, so yeah, you guys might wanna go ahead and check them out. Um, so that's our business for the, for the week, our black business for the week. Um, but yeah, we're gonna get into it. So let's start off by talking about like how, was, how this thing has evolved, right? When COVID first started back in, well, we heard, started hearing about it at the top of the year sometime last year, and it made its way to the United States. It's a little bit of debate about when it actually got here, but, you know, the United States shut down in March, um, and at, at that point, it, it had made it its way to the United States. Um, since then, many, 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 many people have lost their lives, um, and we definitely offer our condolences to those who have lost family member, members as a result to COVID. Um, and then there was a vaccine, right? And then first it was this whole debate about don't take the vaccine. Then it was like, yeah, you guys got to take the vaccine. And now you see like this whole campaign from different states and groups and organizations and stuff that are like, hey, trying to give incentives for the vaccine. Like I saw um, this morning, Club Live in Miami is offering the vaccine to people. You know what I'm saying? Because um, they want people to be vaccinated um, in part, not just to protect them from the from COVID-19, but the variants of it. Um, but let's just be clear, like you get vaccinated, that doesn't mean you can't get COVID. It just means it's less likely that you'll die from it. Um, but people are still like not trying to get vaccinated. And I get it, you know, I understand both why they should and why they shouldn't, right? Because people are not okay with putting something in their body that just came out, right? It, it hasn't been very long since the, and it's not even 100% approved by the FDA yet, you know? And, and also to America's history um, with giving out vaccines to black folks has, has not been a good one. You know, there's the whole Tuskegee experiment. But again, we talked about that in our last episode when we talked about the vaccine. But um, as it stands right now, there are also, you know, they have all these restrictions, still have to wear masks. Well, they go back and forth about the mask thing. I don't think they really know, uh, to be completely honest, because one week it's like, oh, yeah, you got to wear a mask. And the next week, no, you don't got to wear a mask. And then the week later, yeah, wear a mask. So me, 
I wear a mask. I don't care what they're saying because I don't know. You know what I'm saying? And I figured it just makes sense to have some layer of protection if um, if I'm going to be out there. So, guys, you guys have anything that you want to add so far? Yeah. Um, in regards to the mask, I think that, you know, for me personally, I, I definitely think that it's something that I look to do um, just in general, just because of all the different things that's going on. And, and the fact that it's one of the safest ways of, you know, kind of protecting yourself in addition to um, allegedly taking the vaccine and, and um, other um, precautions that people have, quarantining and things of that nature. Um, so the more you can do to kind of keep yourself, you know, safe, the better, um, I'm assuming. But for me personally, I think, you know, asking up and being being mindful of the places that, I, that I'm at um, can help with uh, reducing the chances for contracting part of COVID-19. <clears throat> and so um, that's something I definitely think is okay. I mean, having a mandate for it, uh, you know, I, one of the things about this whole situation that I'm really looking at, and especially with us in particular, is that, um, for, like, that that um, restriction of liberty, if you will, that uh, this presents. Like, we all know that, you know, under the gauze of the safety, safety and welfare of the people, um, the government can pretty much, you know, enact laws that they feel um, would uh, would encourage or would uh, would would provide um, the safety and better welfare of humans. And so, <clears throat> one of the ways in which we're seeing that right now is, you know, either having a mass mandate and or having um, to provide information in regards to um, uh, precautions that people have made for, for COVID-19. And I find it interesting to see exactly how far we're going to see that happen because this is one of the first times I think that we've ever seen in which, you know, governments have to have a crossover into people's health. And, you know, health was one of the things that always were private, you know, they have HIPAA laws and things of that nature that are out to protect individuals from having to um, or from having unnecessary individuals know um, a person's health uh, health history um, or um, where their what their health stands are. So now we have people that have to you know notify others of their of, of this information um, when they go into certain places and and I know so um, that's something that we're definitely gonna talk about here momentarily, but. But um, I think wearing masks and, 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 and some of these precautions that's going on are definitely interesting developments that I'm looking to see. Like, does this just spur off into, like, you know, the issue of just, like, one health in particular? Or is this going to be spurring off into other areas of our lives in which we see more intrusiveness um, occurring um, in ways that we haven't seen in, in, in U.S. history before? I bless you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I was going to say that, um, you know, with this whole COVID thing, it's very fluid. It's really, it's constantly changing. Um, you know, first they say, you know, people wear masks. Uh, then they say eyewear is better than masks. And they say double mask is best protection plus eyewear. So from my understanding, it's like they really just don't know. And, um, you know, the vaccine seems to hold up good according to the results, although they don't know um, the long-term ramification is for emergency use only. So with that being said, I think, you know, they should act accordingly with that when it comes to rules with uh, people ma ma making money and businesses because, um, you know, we're, we're all trying to go back to some sort of normalcy. And I don't think, you know, we, we are at the point where we could just go back to shutting down because people really didn't like that. You, you saw like in Michigan, they were protesting and they were threatening um, um, government officials. So I don't think sh shutting back down is a wise decision uh, if, if uh, the country decides to do that in, in certain states. Because I know some states are going to oppose it. I know Florida, they're like, yeah, we're, we're going to fight this stuff, the new rules, the new restrictions that we're going to get into no matter what. Um, and I know jo President Joe Biden is definitely against um, Governor DeSantis out, out down there in Florida. So, um, yeah, um, I think you made a really good point <laughs> about the HIPAA, right? You know, one of the things that we definitely kept close to our vest as it relates to privacy is our health care and what goes on with us medically. You know, we're not obligated to tell people, you know, what we have going on medically. 
but because of the pandemic, it's kind of breaching that to some extent where they want to know where people and organizations and random ass places, excuse my language, just want to know whether or not you've been vaccinated. On the one hand, it completely violates your privacy, but on another hand, it's for the health, safe, safety, and welfare of the other people that are there. And so it's 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 a tough dichotomy and situation to be in, right? Because it's it's you have a hard time figuring out which one is the better, right? Do you violate your rights for the betterment of the whole, or do you potentially have people at risk? Because the truth of the matter is, people are not being honest about COVID and their exposure, right? I think it would be easier to say, all right, we could go on the trust system if people were being honest. You have people out here that will straight up have COVID and be out there running the streets. Not because they did not know they have COVID, right? Because there is a whole group of people that may not be aware that they have it because they're asymptomatic, but and may not know that they've even been exposed. But you also have people out here sick and wandering around, like whether it be because they don't they don't have anybody to help them or because they just are, have zero intentions of being in the house, right? Um, which can be dangerous to other people because it's it, it, in, a, in a sense, it's kind of selfish, right? Because you have people out here that have compromised immune systems that if they're exposed to COVID, excuse me, if they're exposed to COVID could die, you know? And it's like, you're willing to put people's lives at risk because you want to go to a concert. Do you know what I'm saying? Or you want to go, I don't know, out to dinner. Like, just bring the food home. Watch a concert on TV or on YouTube or whatever have you, you know? Um, I think that we would be further along if people were being more honest about COVID. Um, but, you know, I do have to push back a little bit, um, Malik, about the idea of shutting down. I do actually think it's going to happen again because the variant is, has the numbers spiking. And I think that that's the reason why Governor DeSantis and even Governor Kemp here in Georgia are against shutting back down. The flip side to that is the financial aspect of it and the kind of problems that it creates for the states economically, right? Um, shutting down means unemployment. Mind you, Georgia still hasn't paid people unemployment money. There's a lot of people unemployment money from back in like February when the whole thing started, right? Um, and then you have, you know, all these businesses and stuff, the amount of money that was lost as a result. I mean, I get it. But at the same time, you know, we're talking about the health, safety and welfare of the people that reside within that state. So it becomes a tough decision to make. Sorry, guys, my dog keeps tapping me. Um, he's our fourth unofficial member. Hold on, let me get him. See, everybody, this is Chino. Yeah. Chino. So, um, so yeah, you know, it's it's just a situation where I think it, it it may not be a good idea as it relates to those who have a hard time with accepting the fact that we may have to get shut down again. But I do, I do think it, it's going to be an issue, and I, I, I would foresee, I do actually foresee it happening again. And then with these governors that are pushing back, um, I think so. Gonna, I think I think they're going to push back and they're going to lose. I think it's a losing battle battle for the states because the federal government is pretty much going to, you know, exercise the supremacy clause. I think but, we're at a point of no return with the, uh, like, shutting down because, all right, they, they promoted a vaccine. A lot of people are getting a vaccine. So you can't, I don't think we could fully shut down. I think it's just going to have to be, like, isolated shutdowns, more heavy restrictions because we do have the vaccine out there. People were able to take off their masks. They're experiencing that freedom again. And now you're trying to take it away. I don't think that's going to go over well with the American people and people are going to like get mad again and you know but what happened it's with like that. Get, mad or die, get mad or die right though yeah. because you know, the thing is that, um to, to this point that you guys are making you know I think that like what some woman Malik was saying um just the people in general like we just seen um what was it one of the senators go at um uh, excuse me Ms. Polowski and, and referring to like how, you know, it was supposed to be we're not wearing masks and then vaccines and then going back to masks and how upset they were. And I think that's kind of like the general um, consensus for most of America here. Like, I agree. 
go back to wearing, having to wear the mask, it restricts your breathing and things of that nature. But at the same time, I think when you look at it being, okay, well, then you also need to uh, provide documentation proving that, you know, things are one way or another, you know, um, that, and if that's the other end of that, you know what I mean? People have to make that decision. Okay, which one are you going to do? Are you either going to hey, not go out? Are you going to be, you know, participate and show that you are vaccinated or are you going to see, you know what I'm saying, just wear your mask? So um, I think, you know, currently as it stands, it, it, it's at a good place, but I don't think that the shutdown is going to happen. Although I do think that, you know, it may be best in order for things to kind of slow down. But like Malik said, um, just due to the, the economic impact that it had on the country already and the ones that it was. Yeah, look how much money that like was pushed out because of like those shutdowns for just like, well, like and I, in Georgia's case, a month. Or right. a few weeks. And Florida like two weeks, weeks, right? Uh, you know, a month, but other states shut down longer. Like California was months and months at a time. Like we had full, we were fully open. California still, people can go to gyms and all this other stuff. Like it took right. them a while to open. Like I, I do think that the restrictions will be different, but you guys have to remember the initial shutdown happened because the president sat on the information about COVID and didn't warn the people, so they couldn't appropriately prepare for it. I think that if there isn't going to be another shutdown, I think it'll be one that will be foreseeable. And I think that the president, the current president, will put that information out there so that people can be more prepared for it. I think um, I think that, because think about it, the courts, for example, courts are backed up. Like my workload is out of this world right now. You know what I'm saying? Because we're trying to just do the regular course of business as it relates to anything. Like, you know, for the longest we were doing arraignments on um, on Zoom, right? We're still doing arraignments on Zoom. Now we're also doing calendar calls between Zoom and in-person court. But when it comes to jury trials, they're having juries come in. They're, they're, we're selecting juries to come physically sit in the courts. And they've had to recreate the way that the setup in the courtroom is. Now, for most people, they may not know this, um, a uh, criminal trial is public, right? So, whereas like, you know, when you guys are watching Law & Order, for those that don't know anything about the court system, you have the gallery or any court show for that, for that matter. Judge Judy, you have the gallery in the back where all the people are sitting, right? Then you have a table on one side where the state is or, yeah, or the DA is or whatever. And then you have a table on the other side where the defense is, right? But then in the side there, you have this box where the jurors go. Well, what they're doing in my court, I don't know if they're doing it in other courts, but in person hearings is they have the jury sitting in the gallery just so that they can complete, they can keep them distance, you know, with the social distancing. Plus they're required to wear masks. They're required to, um, at one point, when I went, I went and did a mock trial, they had us wearing masks and face shields. The mask that they gave was horrible. I hated it because it was like this see-through mask because in law, it's in, in, in litigation, and the time you go to court, it's very important to be able to see the face of the witness, right? Because you get to see what their mannerisms are. You get to understand how passionate they are about something, whether or not they're telling the truth, things like that. Their facial expressions are extremely important. And it's very hard to see when you have this much of your face covered. You know what I mean? Um, so I think that the other problem is like, they're, they're, like I just saw a video um, the other day, Frontier, and you see it more on airlines. I don't know why people have such a hard time on airlines, but they do. People are getting on airplanes where they're in cl very close proximity, where it's already difficult to socially distance, and they don't want to wear their masks. Masks, nobody likes wearing masks. Some people like the fact that you can't see their face, but masks are uncomfortable, period, right? They restrict your breathing, they're squeezing on your face, nobody's used to them, you know what I'm saying? People don't like them, but people wear them out of the common courtesy of others and to keep themselves and others protected, right? But then you have these people that don't wanna wear masks and they get on the, they get on the airplane, they're instructed to do it. These are just the rules of the flight. Like if you're going to be on an airplane, this is what you got to do. Just like if you go into McDonald's, you got to make sure you have on shoes and a shirt. Otherwise, you're not going to get service. You know what I'm saying? And so people can respect that rule, but they have a hard time respecting the mask rule because they don't like it. Well, some people don't like wearing shirts and shoes, but they still got to do it. You see what I'm saying? So I think that 
you know, that guy on the airplane, then he started doing other stuff, violating the daggone flight attendant um, by groping her and carrying on. They ended up duct taping him to the, to the seat, landing the flight. It was a whole situation. But you do constantly see these videos of people on airplanes getting into these altercations, getting put on no fly lists and all that, simply because they wouldn't put a mask on their face. And it's like, just put it on. You know, you save yourself the trouble and the headache, the frustration, all that, the amount of things that you have to experience after not putting on a mask by getting on a plane versus putting it on is like the scales of it's not balanced at all. Like it's not worth it. So, you know, I mean, you you definitely run into these issues. Um, and then and then one thing I want to say about social distancing, I don't know if anybody else on the panel has this issue. It might just be me because I just know how I am. I get irked bad. I already don't like people standing real close to me in the line at the store, right? This is pre-COVID. Now that they have the six feet thing, I get irked bad when somebody is standing behind me and they don't have a mask and they want to stand right up on me, almost feel like they're breathing on my neck. They might not be breathing on my neck, but that's what it feels like. Do you guys have that issue too? Or is it just, just me and my germophobia? Yeah, no, I, I normally don't like people being too close to period. It's just more like a safety concern. So like uh, right. kind of like looking around just on that from that tip. But just in general though, like yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I just from just before a pandemic, I really didn't like people being too too close to me anyhow. So yeah, that still stands for me. Um and I, I don't know, like honestly though, I just uh, it, on the t on the topic of social distancing i've found in my life generally that like i've been able to accomplish the most you know sometimes when you are distant from others and you just kind of like find yourself just being um, able to just focus so um to me like you know it is what it is when it comes to social distancing like you know i, I think it's it's good to be able to have your friends and family around and be able to see them. And if everybody's safe, then all oh, great. You know what I mean? But I just, on a personal level though, I just feel like sometimes you need to distance yourself to be able to get to where you're trying to go on certain heights and things. And when you're trying to reach certain levels, you might have to kind of re-surround yourself with just either your thoughts and your positivity. So um, I, I personally don't necessarily have a problem with it so much, but sometimes just for my mentals though, I definitely need to get out and see, you know, outside. So I have right. little, I'm a Gemini, like, you know, so yeah, I have a little bit of both sides in that regard. It's just one that just, you know, uh, and love life on that regard and being able to just isolate yourself to it and, and just mind. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I think that's a good thing, social distancing. I mean, I guess it helps, but I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, they promoted, everybody promoted the vaccine. And they're saying, like, you can pretty much go back to normal. Um, so it's like people don't want to be distancing that much. We're social creatures at the end of the day. So uh, we want to, you know, be able to go outside, do normal stuff, because it's not normal for us to always be in the house trapped and not being able to move around like we used to. So, I mean, but from my personal experience, it's been okay. I mean, it's just not being able to do what you used to do, but... I mean, it's, it's all right. It's fine. Um, I mean, it's for your health and safety, so you should definitely do it. Um, you know, wear a mask. Even if you're vaccinated, you probably should wear a mask. That's what they're saying. Because they they basically promoted it. Like, if you get the vaccine, you can't catch COVID. So people are just going masks and doing right. whatever. It's like, no, it's just to help right. protect you and decrease the chance of, like, death if you catch it. Yeah, it's not like a... Uh, a cure you know it's not like okay right. if you get the vaccine like you know COVID's just not gonna affect you, happen to you at all right. it's just like it's just like you know breathing air like you know it's not like, like the that. flu shot it's like the flu shot you can get yeah, the flu shot and still get the flu it, it, you know it, it just it just lessens the system, symptoms and decreases your chance of catching it but that's it it doesn't like you know it's not 100% proof it's not even 90% proof like so, so they need to stop. There's a lot of stats coming out. It's like 85% effective, you know, right. a lot of the vaccines. So it's not even 95, 99% effective. And they're talking about the possibility of a booster, right? Meaning you have to go back and get another shot. Um, right. Which is not, mm, I, don't, I don't see that happening. They could talk all they want, but people didn't even want to get the first one. 
So well, that, and that, that's the other thing about the vaccine, right? Like a lot of the, many people have gotten the shot, but many, many people have not. They just yeah, not we were supposed to be at 70, almost 70% by July, but we're like, what, 48%? Right. People ain't with it. Um, yeah. yeah, especially in New York. That's why they implement a lot of restrictions because in New York, a lot of people, especially in our community, aren't vaccinated. It's 40% or less. Right. Black people are vaccinated. The highest uh, percentage is Asians at 71%. When I was reading the article, the reason why they're trying to implement these new laws in New York, uh, because not enough people are vaccinated to achieve a somewhat of a herd immunity. Right. So, in full disclosure, I didn't want to get vaccinated. You know what I'm saying? I didn't want to do it at all. Um, I didn't know what, I don't know what, what it is. I didn't know what they were putting in it. I didn't know the long-term effects. Am I going to turn into a zombie, go grow a third arm, whether or not it's taking years off my life, whatever, whatever it is, I didn't know. And I didn't like the idea of getting a vaccine that had not even been approved by the FDA and was put out so quickly. However, I also have a compromised immune system, right? And so and I work in a place where I'm in close proximity to a multitude of people, especially when they started talking about doing in-person hearings in court and things of that nature. Now, yeah, we both might have on a mask, but you know, masks are not 100% effective. Social distancing is not always 100% effective. If somebody's coming up behind cleaning, you know, after every little thing, after every single time you touch something or talk to somebody or whatever, then all right, maybe it might work. But the truth is, it's not, it's not 100%, there's nothing 100%. So for me, I felt like the best thing for me to do was go ahead and get vaccinated because I have a compromised immune system. And if I catch COVID, I don't want to die. So, you know, and I don't want to be up in the hospital and, I'm, and I, I take pretty good care of myself, you know, um, but I don't want to be in the hospital on a ventilator struggling to breathe. I have a number of friends who don't have compromised immune system that have caught COVID and were very, very sick in the hospital, in ICU, things of that nature. I also have people, family, friend, family members and friends that have died from COVID. So, you know, I didn't want to be in that position. So I felt like what was best for me is to go ahead and get vaccinated. I think that it's very interesting how you have these two schools of thought, people that want to get vaccinated and think that everybody needs to get vaccinated and people who are completely against it. And then they call each other stupid, right? Like, I don't think it's stupid to get vaccinated. I don't think it's stupid to not get vaccinated. Um, but I do think that it's people's choices and we need to respect people's choices. Um, I think that, you know, um, I think that we, we need to be careful also too in how we, how we um, effectively interact with one another as it relates to what people's ideas are about the vaccine. Um, I know that we also have a video here. Um, Malik, is, Malik, are you gonna go over the, um, art, I'm sorry, it's an article. Um, the article's from, where is it from Malik? The, the article is from um, the New York, uh, not the New York Times, AP. Um, hold on, let me yes. uh, get it up first real quick. Uh, here we go, it's from AP News. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, make sure I do my screen Is up. it an article or video? It's an article. Okay. All right, can y'all see my screen? Yep. All right, so basically, you know, it, uh, New York is implementing uh, vaccination rules um, and that's prompting concerns for uh, business owners. So in this article, they really highlighted a restaurant called the Cargo Cafe um, in which uh, people have to prove that they have been vaccinated against the coronavirus. So uh, he, he you know, the restaurant owner, he's not really liking this because he doesn't want to have to close down the inside and go back to outdoor seating only because, you know, that really has an effect on his business. Um, so the, the rule in New York is vaccines in bars, restaurants, um, and gyms um, starting September 13th, um, they're going to require a proof of vaccination. Uh, the mayor says it's pretty straightforward. You either show your vaccination card 
yes, you can um, gain, uh, obtain entry to the uh, premises or no, you get you have to turn around, right? And um, uh, if, if you violate the mass violations, you'll, you could be subject to a fine of up to $1,000. So that's uh, the background of the rule that they have. Um, however, you know, the, the guy in the article is stating that like maybe people could argue that, you know, um, the city has overstepped its authority because um, in the past, uh, religious, for example, a religious organization, they, they won in court um, with the gathering um, of uh, religious gatherings um, and those were restricted in New York. So um, he, he feels as though there is some hope with that. Uh, but um, I, I really think, um, you know, that's a, it's a bad move because they really promoted the vaccine as in, you know, no masks. And now it's like, okay, you got to go back to masks. And now if you don't wear a mask, they're going to uh, fine you. And, uh, you know, if you're not vaccinated, you're going to be restricted in the city. You can't do as much as others. So they're really isolating the unvaccinated people in somewhat of a discriminatory way. I know it's for the health and safety, but um, I don't really agree with it. And it's going to hurt businesses as well. What do, what do y'all think about it? Yeah, no, I totally agree with that. I think, you know, it, it causes the business owner to be in a, a frustrating position because he has to, or they have to rather, um, question their patrons and people are coming to support their business. And, and here's a, an additional, um, an additional re requirement or restriction in which they'll have to impose. Also, um, I think, you know, ideally it's great to make sure that um, they're, I don't want to say great, but I think ideally it's ideal for maybe trying to limit outbreaks and, and things of that nature from occurring in a certain person's um, establishment. But again, for the restriction on freedom of choice or liberty of individuals to be able to uh, manage how they manage their care, um, those are the things that I'm a little bit more concerned about because I feel like now it's like people have to um, get vaccinated or suffer yeah. severe consequences to their day to day life. Exactly. So those are things that I think, you know, or, you know, that, that, that I like kind of watch to see like how things like that develop because um, um, it, it could have more lasting effects outside of just, you know, it being here. This could just be the start of um, a movement to always just make it so inclusive for things that we thought were just private rights that people used to have in the past will no longer be that. And so um, that's why I just want to keep a close eye on how things and how states uh, continue to to, to watch and develop these types of um, um, laws and how things, you know, move, move, excuse me, how things transition moving forward. Um, I think, I think I agree with you both um, that it, there is a huge balancing test when it comes to this, right? It comes to between, like I said before, the health and safety of, you know, the people that reside in that state but also to a violation of people's privacy and also to a violation of people's ability to move freely, right? We are a free country, so to speak. And we do have the ability to be able to move, move about, you know, except for like when you're in jail, you know? Um, and and to, to require someone to show that they've been vaccinated, it, I do believe that it violates people's, it violates your rights, but at the same time, you got to be safe because not only are you potentially putting other patrons of these establishments in jeopardy by not, um, if you're not vaccinated, if you potentially have COVID and you're out there, like I said, those people that that group of people who are dishonest that are like super spreaders and now they're just spreading spreading COVID like is love. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm not comparing COVID to love, but I'm just saying that's how they share. Yeah, they do call them super spreaders. Right. Like that, so I can believe, believe you me, they spread COVID a lot better than they spread love. I can assure you. You know what? You might be, you might be healing this something with that way. You know what I'm saying? But they out here just spreading it, just giving away. You know, and it's it's frustrating because it, they giving it out like they do. Hey. But it's frustrating though because we're in this position because of super spreaders, right? If people weren't out there super being super spreaders and being honest about their exposure and things like that, then it would be less likely that they're like the, 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 these establishments, even the government are making these types of requirements where they're forcing you to have to show that you've been vaccinated. 
that's not fair, right? That's not fair that these people, and then, okay, then they show card, then they have the card. How do we know the card's not made up? You know, then you get into this whole other aspect of fraud. And I mean, it's, it just goes down this crazy rabbit hole. I think that, believe it or not, one of the ways to kind of counter it is um, automation, right? Having these automate like things being becoming more automated. But on the flip side, it completely ruins the economy, right? If you go to a restaurant and you have these robots handling your stuff, then you don't got to worry about the super spreading of, 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 of COVID. But at the same time- well, like, But people still have to gather though, Sam, like, the, like restaurants, bars, and gyms. Hold on, let me finish. You know what I'm saying? That's how you, in effect, limit the exposure to COVID. You see what I'm saying? But that doesn't say anything about what happens with other things. Like I know here in Georgia, um, you couldn't really go anywhere but the park when everything was shut down. Now, granted, Georgia was only shut down, but Atlanta was shut down for like only a couple of weeks. But you could go to the park, you know what I mean? And, and you can go on the belt line, but people get like, you know, you get people really have a hard time being in the house. And, and, and that even goes for introverted people who prefer to be in the house. Only people that probably didn't have an issue with it were agoraphobes who um, have a phobia of going outside, which probably heightened their uh, phobia. But like you said earlier, Malik, we are social creatures. So even if it's not going to a bar or going to a restaurant or going to a concert or to the movies, people still need to interact with one another. And just doing it on the computer all the time, like with the Jetsons, isn't always going to be enough. You know, we need contact with each other. You know what I mean? That's just how we are as human beings. And so um, I think that it creates this, this whole issue which triggers rage, right? It triggers this, this, this um, tension within ourselves because people feel so stuck and they feel so confined, you know, and it's, it's unhealthy. Um, I, think that, I think that we have to find a better way. That, I mean, I just, to, violating people's privacy and their ability to move freely is, I don't know if it's going to create more problems than it's going to resolve just by keeping people safe from COVID. I think we have to find a better way. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I was just going to mention the point that, like, with these specific businesses mentioned in the article, like, that's what, how they thrive on, like, gatherings, crowds, like, this COVID is really harmful to restaurants, bars, and gyms because that's that's how they make their money. Like people coming through the door, like these physical businesses, and those are social settings where you have to have that contact. So I understand why they wanted to implement the vaccine, but still, you can still catch COVID with the vaccine. That's my thing. Like you can still catch it, um, and I don't know if we're going to be at the point where we can get testing done at these places, but maybe you can implement that but I mean I don't know how much resources would have to be expended for you to test out every time do yeah. rapid testing but we we got a video pull, uh ever queued up um that kind of will go more into the restrictions here um so uh you want to hit play on that e Francisco to Walt Disney and Walmart telling employees it's time to get vaxxed or else in fact we just learned today that CNN reportedly fired three employees for going into the office unvaccinated and for those still holding out, options appear to be dwindling because if you work for an employer that requires a COVID vaccination and refuse or quit, you can, of course, just find a new job. But in the meantime, it appears you will not be able to collect unemployment. When somebody is discharged from work, most states will look at whether they were discharged due to some type of severe misconduct, um, which is typically a rule violation, right? So if there was a rule in place from the employer that asked somebody to get vaccinated or required someone to get vaccinated and they chose not to, um, in that case, they would be violating the rule. Now, states do also consider an unemployment claims if the worker had good cause for the misconduct to generally consider good causes are religion or disability, as you mentioned, Tyler. Outside of that, unemployment lawyers that we spoke to say qualifying for unemployment is going to be tough. According to the latest CDC guidance, about 58% of eligible Americans have gotten vaccinated against COVID. So we'll see if this economic incentive encourages more people to get the shot, Tyler. BlackRock and Sis So the thing about this video that I find interesting is that the two things that um, are, I guess, exceptions to the rule are religion and disability. Here's the thing. 
if I have to prove my disability, that just means I just had to violate my own. I mean, I had to, it goes against HIPAA, right? Like you're requiring me to share my medical stuff, just like the vaccine, or whether or not I've been vaccinated in order to be able to keep my job or get unemployment, which probably ain't going to come anyway, right? Because so many people still are without their unemployment. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily agree with that, but I do think that if people are not vaccinated, I think that maybe the job itself can make changes to 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 how um, how they how they deal with it, right? Like if you have somebody who's constantly out there in the open dealing with people, maybe require them to be vaccinated. But then those those positions that aren't aren't don't require so much interaction with others and make those for the unvaccinated workers. Like if you have Walmart, maybe you have those who are in the back um, taking care of shipment or come in on the night shift where Walmart's closed to restock. Maybe those can be the unvaccinated workers. And then those who are vaccinated, maybe you have them out in the, out, out in the fr um, front talking to people and dealing with people. I don't think that people's jobs should be at stake because they don't want to get vaccinated. I think it's a, a choice, you know? Um, and, and on top of that, um, people are gonna spread COVID no matter if you're vaccinated or not vaccinated. It's a per I think that it's a person's choice as to whether or not they're willing to take that risk. You know what I mean? That's just like, um, even like an STD, right? If condoms are out there, you can avoid being transferring most STDs by using condoms, but everybody doesn't use them. So, you know, you don't lose your job because you don't wear a condom. That's discrimination. You see what I'm saying? And I think that people should be allowed to have their own decision, make their own decision as it relates to whether or not they want to be vaccinated. Oh, uh, yeah. No, I definitely think that it's a personal decision. Huh? You know yeah. yeah, yeah, I get you. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah no, I, I definitely think it's a personal decision that um, individuals have to take. And I think you also have to look in, in lieu of, like you said, in, in, in your lifestyle and how you're moving, you know what I mean? In, in regards to if a person has um, a, a job in which they have to interact with the public and, they, you know, their employer or their employer is requiring them to do such, then, I mean, you have to, you know, weigh it in on your own personal terms as to is it something that you feel like you need to do for your career or not. And um, it, it just sucks that this, the decisions that people have to make, but unfortunately, that's the times that we're in. And so I think that's decisions that most Americans are making. And like you said, a, a, for the most part, most people are, are decided to, to um, move forward with continuously getting um, vaccine and things of that nature. So mm -hmm. hopefully it won't continuously be a big of a deal, but um, in the current state, that's where we're at. Uh, yeah, I would say, um, you know, as far as this goes, it's, it's crazy how like they're trying to force you to get the vaccine in a way like, Oh well, you have the option of not choosing the vaccine, but oh, oh, you want to work? You can't work at certain jobs anymore. It's sort of you know kind of discriminating against you in a way. Like if you're not vaccinated, you can't work at this job. You can't go to this gym. You can't um, do anything. It's restricting your movement. So that, mm -hmm. that's pretty interesting. That you know, because because when COVID first came, California projected that half the state was going to die, like 20 million people died. And that wasn't the case. So I think in certain ways, they're overreacting to COVID, in my opinion. Um, I really think so in some ways. In some ways, they, you know, they were like said, days ago about it. It didn't take it serious enough early on. And now they're trying to actually get super serious, a little too serious, I think. Because, I mean, to my understanding, COVID doesn't have a 50% death rate. But this is how, like, these new restrictions is, is kind of like, oh, okay, COVID has, like, a 50% death rate. If you catch COVID, it's like, okay, 50-50 chance. Like, you know, they, they, they're they treating it like a stage, like, stage four cancer or something. Um, and, some you know, but, I mean, a lot of people, the, the amount, I think a lot of that comes from the amount of people that have died from COVID. Like I get the fact I, I get the fact that like percentage wise overall all the people that have um, contracted COVID versus the amount of people that have died from it there still has been an a really really high number of people that have died it may not be a high percentage of people but it's still a lot of people and so yeah. it's scary because the thing is you don't know the thing about COVID is like 
there's so many variables that are unknown. And you guys know, you know, people fear the unknown. Like people will get COVID, don't know they have it. That's scary. People, you might die, you might not die. That's scary. You know what I'm saying? And then on top of that, COVID, as I believe last year, I don't know if it's still the case this year, but was the highest, um, was the people, the, the, the thing that people, most people died from. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, maybe like 10% of people that got COVID died. That means how many people got it? You know what I mean? And so you get it. You don't even know which way it's going to go for you. Like, I think there's just too many unknowns. And I think that that's the reason why people are taking it so seriously and why you have so much, um, so many restrictions and rules that are coming about as, as it relates to COVID. And mind you, all those people died in we were shut down, like the most of the world was shut down and still all those people died. So to have it reopen, going back to business as usual, I think creates the um, concern that it could get worse, you know? And, and I know it's a place of fear and people should not live in a place of fear, but I do think we have to be realistic as well and start talking and thinking about, you know, what are the best ways to be able to move, be able to move freely you know, make money and be safe. And I think that that right there is the hardest thing to balance. Of um, course, in a vaccine now, people throat and basically saying, oh, the major companies that hire most Americans or you get the good jobs from are basically saying, nah, you got to have a restriction. Even if they have the remote option, they're talking about having the vaccine nowadays. So, I mean, that's that's a bit excessive in my opinion. I mean, you know, if you're working from home, I don't think you should have to get vaccinated. Um, at least a company shouldn't have a vaccination policy. But I understand maybe like a bar or restaurant where you have to have crowds. I can see that. Like, okay, we would like our workers to be vaccinated, but it still should be a choice. Like, you shouldn't force people to do it. You know, right. maybe those workers would have to be subjugated to maybe COVID testing periodically. But forcing the vaccine... And, and you can't get your job, you can't get unemployment benefits if you're fired. In that case, that's a bit excessive. I don't know if y- what y'all think about that. No, um, like I said, I just think that this is where we at as a country, and I think that's yeah. the stands of times. I, um, I do think it's excessive, but like you said, I, from this whole standpoint, my, 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 be, my standpoint from the beginning of this is just the whole forcing of people to have to take something is excessive, but as we've seen, it's, it's happened um, numerous times. We can't tell, like flu shots and kids going to schools and things of that nature. So um, it, it's one of those requirements that uh, we do know government has the right to do, like you said, for the health, health safety, and well-being of the um, of the of the people as a whole. And unfortunately, it's one in which we we are seeing people now having to either make decisions, uh, economic decisions, based off of this. So um, it, it's something a development that I continue to watch closely just to see um, how things, how far things do go um, and how it shifts the dynamic of uh, the day-to-day living for most Americans um, and just trying to continue to live my life the best way that I can. Yeah, yeah. Um, so with that, guys, um, I'm going to go ahead and give our motivational minute and uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap up. So Jim Rohn said, take care of your body. It's the only place you have to live. Um, and with that being said, like, like I think all of us kind of shared the sentiments of do it, do what's best for you. Um, and just remember that there's other people that whatever you do, it can affect, but just still do what's best for you. Um, you know, I think... The whole COVID and vaccine thing is a tough thing, right? It's a tough thing to make a decision in because you are effectively talking about the effects of your life in your body in the place that you have to reside. Nobody else has to reside within your body except you. Nobody can. I mean, unless you leave in like transference of spirits like they do in the movies. But um, essentially that's, it's your body, it's your temple and you have to take care of it the best way that you see fit. Um, but again, there's other people that can be affected. So it's definitely a tough balancing test, but just remember that you got to be safe because, you know, nobody wants to see anything bad happen to you. So, you know, that's my motivational minute. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, remember to tap in, check out, 
realnegus.com. That's R-E-A-L-N-E-G-U-S.com. They've got t-shirts, hoodies, things of that nature. It's Black Arts are Black owned business spotlight of the week. And um, yeah, just to in conclude, take care of yourself. And remember that we are here also here to take care of others as well, because we are social creatures um, and be good to one another. Uh, you guys, you guys want to wrap up? Uh, you got anything to LC? Oh, uh, yeah. Sorry, guys. I was yarning. I'm back. I don't know what's going on. No problem. Long week. That, that <laughs> Two one zero four is my Instagram. You guys can catch me there. Um, any questions or comments or anything that you guys want us to talk about, I appreciate you guys sharing it. Um, letting us know, we definitely get to it. You also can catch us on the weekdays at um, What's Up Wednesdays. You know, we go live every Wednesday around eight eight thirty ish. Excuse me, eight thirty. Um, just to talk about what's going on, current events, same type of type of discussions that we may have here, but. Not as many videos and things of that nature. So this is an opportunity for us to kind of speak with the people, um, get with us, let us know what you guys want, come in, tap in, comment, leave comments, suggestions, whatever you want to do. You can even join us on stage as well. Um, and just want to say to everybody, you know, again, um, do what's best for you and your family. Continue to, um, you know, look after y'all no matter what. Um, you know, self-preservation is one of the most important things. So. Um, be, be, be very conscious of what you need to do for yourself, um, regardless of what mandates may be um, placed in your area. Just you know, do what you feel like you need to do so that you guys are okay. Um, and, and, and protecting yourself as well as others. So I just want to leave with those last little thoughts. Um, and also say that um, thank you guys for tapping in with us. And yeah. Yeah. Oh, let me draw my socials and I'll let you go ahead and finish it off. Go ahead. No problem. Like, yeah. So if you guys want to follow me on social on social media on Facebook, I am Samantha Adams hyphen ESQ. And on Instagram, I am Samantha Renee 77 underscore ESQ. You can also tap in with us on Facebook. Like come here, visit us, see us on Facebook, on live, um, live every Sunday at 1130 ish. And then Wednesdays um, on Instagram live at around 830 ish. Um, also to check us out on, we have a page here on Facebook. We have a page on IG and we have a page on YouTube. All of them are kind of poised podcast. Um, and yeah, like, share, subscribe, follow, tell a friend to tell a friend. Malik. Yeah, um, you know, thank y'all guys for watching. Um, you know, like they said, like, share, subscribe. Um, you can follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram at Counterpoints Podcast. Um, my personal social media handles they are Malik and Foster for all social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that good stuff. Um, so if you guys have any feedback, drop a comment below. Let us know if you want us to talk about a certain specific topic. We'll be more than willing to talk about that topic. Um, so thank you all guys for tapping in and I'll take us home. Hey. Thank <laughs> you.